Why would you reach out to a bride who had left the experiment? Did you I... reach out to all the brides that had left? No. Okay, so why choose Ellie to reach out and initiate a conversation? Ellie, but not I all the brides, so why the this brides, bride in particular? Some of them. If delusional was a person, would put Tori's face next to it. The fact that she saw all that and still didn't have a reaction and still decided to storm off doesn't make any sense. And Jono and Ellie, as I said yesterday, I can't wait for them to break up. If anybody finds out, please send me an email information and i'll do a review when they break up because i don't see that lasting long and i am here for timothy and lucinda oh my god they are the relationship they are the gold standard for me for the season even if they didn't work out oh my god i love their journey i love their growth um i know they say timothy might be dating andy but mm, i don't know anyway as long as he's got a relationship with lucinda whatever it is friendship family whatever it is i'm good and i am here for alexandra I am here for Alexandra. That's what I was just going to say. I'm here for her holding people's feet to the fire. Anyway, I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button. Turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. And definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight Australia, Season 11, Episode 38. Start a petition for Alexandra to get a raise, please please because i am here for her the way she was able to read jonathan and ellie without saying a lot oh my god had me on the edge of my seat and so excited oh my god anyway so all everybody returns all the participants return obviously they have the three couples they have to highlight them tori and jack um Jaden and eden and sarah and tim okay I'll, I'll count them and make it four and then ridge and jade and so they have a sort of a review of all a rewatch of everybody's weddings and it it seemed awkward and it it was it was all over the place but hey it is what it is and everybody seemed very relaxed and happy to see themselves on day 1 and how excited they were or how nervous they were um, they then decide to call Jono and uh, Lauren as the first couple. And I am here for Alexandra. I am here. I love this. Because this is how you read someone without reading them. At the same time, you're not disrespectful, but you're holding their feet to the fire. Because when Jono and Lauren were called, Jono said to Ellie, Oh, wish me luck because you're sitting with Ellie. And then he sat down and then they were asked, okay, so how are the two of you? We're fine. What's going on? Jono to try and minimize the time he's known uh, Ellie and say, oh, we've no only known each other for four weeks. I didn't know her when I was in the experiment. It's only after we had a conversation and I realized that there's a lot of banter. They coached each other. They coached each other and we see them the way Alexandra sees them. We see each other because I have a feeling they coached each other and they said, we're going to say we've been dating for four weeks. We we created a bond after our telephone conversation. And then it's just been going smooth sailing since then. We really like each other. We see each other falling in love with one another. And we are really, really happy. I, I, I That's my opinion. They coached each other on what to say during one, the dinner party, and two, this final ceremony, because there is no way they're both saying the same thing. I'm very happy. You don't need to tell people you're happy if you're happy. People were just going to see it. It's just going to be sort of emoting from you, and no one will have to ask you. And so I give Alexandra credit for asking Jono, explain what happened. Oh, I didn't know Ellie while well, I was in the experiment. It was only after the experiment when I called her. And then, so he's trying to make it seem like during the experiment, there was nothing there. After final vows, that's when he called her and then they created this bond. No, they were flirting with one another throughout the experiment. Their partners knew that they fancied one another. They started sending messages as a way of sort of testing the waters and then realized they liked each other and kept going. And so they must have deleted some, some of the text messages that were more that way as soon as, you know, Tori revealed that Jono and Ellie had been texting. And I like the fact that Jono was asked to clarify the length of their relationship. Are you in love with her? Um, do you see yourself falling in love? And for him to say, oh, she's a very good... No, this relationship is not going anything anywhere. I'm sorry. 
it's not going anywhere because when he was asked you see yourself falling in love with her you said oh yes she's a very beautiful person no he should have said oh yes i can see myself going that way just because she's very empathetic she's very caring we have the same values we have the same morals we have the same goals in life we have the same outlook on life oh i love the fact that she's this that and other and he couldn't say that all he said is she's very beautiful oh it's been amazing which tells me he doesn't really, there's no depth to the relationship. Once the sort of superficial bits or whatever it is, the fling or whatever you call it dies out, that's that's when this relationship is over. Same as Ali. She was excited when he said, oh, she's, she's very beautiful. But there should be more to a relationship, especially if you're going to go to bat for one another like this. That's just my opinion. And I give Alexandra credit because she asked Ali, Ellie, why didn't you get, greet Lauren when you came in? Because Lauren said, oh, my feelings were hurt. She didn't even respond to my hello. Oh, well, I didn't hear it. And it's like, no, I give Sarah credit. And everybody was rolling their eyes. Even Tori, this is why I said that. You know you're wrong when you, when you have somebody's enemies fighting for them and holding you to account on their behalf. To have Tori and Jack going to war for Lauren says a lot more about Ellie than it does about Lauren. It says a lot more about Ellie than it says about Lauren. It tells you that Tori cannot stand Ellie. They cannot stand her. And just she was being portrayed as this angel or this loving, caring person while her true colors are showing. And so for Alexandra to ask her, you know, why didn't you greet her? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't hear it. And Sarah said, no, you should have taken... Irregardless of how Lauren and Jono ended, in my opinion, this is my opinion... As soon as they walked in, either before the, the, the final ser uh, dinner party or as soon as they walked in, Ellie should have made a beeline for Lauren. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Can we sit down for a chat? Yes. Hi. Um, I understand you and Jono broke up, but I just wanted to say this. I'm sincerely sorry about how things ended up with the two of you. I know you saw our text messages. There was no harm intended. He just became a friend, someone I confided in during the experiment, someone who was able to give me advice on my relationship when my relationship was struggling. And so I am so sorry that we came in together without giving you a heads up. I just want you to know that we've created a bond. I really like him and we're trying to explore to see where this goes. That's what she should have said, in my opinion instead of her coming in and thinking she's all that because the day Jono breaks up with her I'm here I've already said it I'm going to do a review on them it was interesting watching Lauren and, jo and Jono's journey you know from the time they said I do to you know th their final vows and you could see from what was going on Ellie's reaction and this to me if you go back and watch it you'll see that Ellie and Jono were dating or we showed interest in one another during the experiment. And then as things progressed, their connection continued to grow. By the time Ellie stood up and had her waiting to exhale moment and sort of told John, um, Ben off, the, she and Jono had already decided on what to do. That's my opinion. I feel like they'd already decided that they were going to date and they were going to see where things went. I think they were, by the time they were sending text messages and everything else, that was the beginning of their relationship and they hadn't decided whether or not it was going to be serious. Because when it came out that, you know, Jono and Lauren sort of had sex when, she, when they had homestay, you could see on Ellie's face that she wasn't happy. She wasn't happy about that. And it's like, if you were not dating, him then why does that affect you in any way why does that affect you in any way and i loved the fact that they showed the clip of jono saying oh i'll never pursue anything with ellie and then to have her you know be there and after the whole sort of montage played everybody was clearing their throats and it's like oh my god the shade the shade people were able to shade them without saying anything and i it, it's interesting to see it's interesting to see even the experts you could see they were really like yes now how do you talk your way out of this i have to give credit to lauren because she was able to tell jonah that i hate the way that every time you're backed into a corner you come out guns blazing and you attack anyone you feel is sort of cornering you and this is what you're doing you're trying to throw me under the bus for you and ellie flirting and beginning your relationship while we're still married what that's none of my business i have nothing to do with that and for jonah to talk down to ben i don't like that at all i don't like that i have seen a side of ellie and jonah that i distaste i hate and i never never want to say i hate someone because i don't know them personally but the side that i've seen of jonah and ellie 
oh my god i can't wait to do a review on their relationship please can people send me comments or clips that you see so that i can keep them for my you know my review when i review their relationship after the breakup because i can see that coming i love the fact that Lauren was able to have her growth and sort of uh, reflect on her journey and realize that she's not the same person she was when she walked in. And you could see John who felt bad when he realized that Lauren was actually saying very nice things about him. That's when he said, oh, I always felt like you didn't like me and you didn't have anything positive. Oh, please sit down. Please sit down. Next up is Tim and Sarah. Tim and Sarah for me, I've always been iffy about them um, in the sense that I didn't like the way Sarah sort of played with Tim at the start, how she wouldn't attend dates and she always had excuses as to why she didn't want to go on dates with him, even though he arranged dates for it, for the two of them. And I think this is where a lot of people, a lot of the cast members went off her. Yes, they say they're progressing. I think Sarah was given the redemption storyline and the producers were really trying not to show us or, or sort of highlight how bad she was at times because for them to show a clip of Cassandra sort of talking badly about Sarah and then have the experts ask Cassandra, why does Sarah get on your nerves? And then not tell tell us or show us exactly what she said. Doesn't make sense. I think there was more to that because as Cassandra was talking, you could see the other participants were sort of nodding their heads in agreement. And in the end, Michael had to sort of speak up and say, you know, yeah, Sarah, you're not one of the best people. And it makes me question, what did she say or what did she do? And why is it they are the two people that are saying this about her? And for her to say, I've never spoken to you, Cassandra. And it's like, why haven't you spoken to her? She's been in the experiment with you. You spent time with one another in groups. Why is it? Why have you not spoken to her? Which makes me question that. Was Sarah part of the, you know, you are beneath us group? That's my opinion. That's the impression that I get. That they might have been... I don't know Sarah, so I don't want to say anything because I don't know her per se. But it makes me question whether they, they sort of treated Cassandra like she was the, at the bottom of the food chain. And this is why Cassandra feels some type of way. And this was her moment to speak up and say, I don't like this woman. She is very, very self-centered. She is very nasty. This and this and this is what she said. I have a feeling that's what could have happened. I have a feeling that Cassandra might have spoken about her treating like uh, uh, Sarah treating her like she was at the bottom of the food chain. Sarah saying some of the meanest things to the girls. And I think this is why the experts or the producers, because it didn't align with their redemption story arc. This is why they didn't show us because it doesn't make sense that they kept showing us. She just lies. She's very fake. Why is she fake? What is she saying? What is she doing? I hate that that wasn't revealed and I can't wait for Cassandra to do an interview and actually tell us what's happened. Yes, Tim on his part owned up to telling Jono that, you know, he was very anxious that he might have not made the right decision. I don't think he made the right decision. The interesting thing though about Cassandra as well is as things were being said, you could see what she was agreeing with and what she, was, she wasn't agreeing with. You could see her disappointment when Tim decided to continue in this relationship, when he said, you know, we're continuing to grow and whatever. I think it's either um, Sarah said something nasty to Cassandra or the guys might have come back and told Cassandra what Sarah was saying or doing to Tim. And this is why Cassandra has gone off Tim and it seems Mike has gone off Tim. Ellie, Ellie's just looking for a bandwagon to jump on. That way, you know, if anyone is going to hate on Sarah, then she is going to join the group. You could see that Tori as well doesn't like Sarah because obviously of the issues with Jack and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. Am I happy they stay together? Mm, I don't know. It is what it is. Am I the only one who's noticed the trend with Jaden and Eden? Because it seems like every time there is either confessionals, there is interviews, or there's situations where they get to sit down and be asked questions, they get preferential treatment. That's the impression that I get. They get preferential treatment. And if they, it looks like they're not getting preferential treatment, then they try and look for something or a way to sort of get preferential treatment, be it Eden sort of overplaying her anxiety or whatever. Because... I was surprised when Jaden took out the little pictures that he brought from the experts. And then to me, it seemed like he was trying to disarm them. That way they wouldn't ask anything that would be upsetting for Eden. That's the impression that I get. Because otherwise, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense why we got to where we are. Why Jaden was, you know, oh, we never show, saw clips of their marriage or their wedding. Uh, we really didn't hear them sort of explore anything tangible that might have 
it sort of created conflict for Jaden to sort of say, you know, oh, we're doing very hard, we're very well. We were able to put your advice into practice with this, that, and the other. And it's just like, oh no. He's just telling them what he feels they need to hear. And he's just looking for a way to sort of one up and get points from the experts. So I don't know. I've never really understood their journey. I've never really seen their marriage for what it is. So I don't have an opinion about them because everything has always been staged and sort of placed in a way that it doesn't sort of make either one of them uncomfortable. That's the impression that I get. They say they are happy. They are looking towards, you know, longevity and are planning on children and dogs and stuff. And it's like, hey. If it works, I love it. I root for love. So, hey, whatever it is. So, you have Tori and Jack. They're the next couple up. I think they've decided to start with the couples that said yes on final vows. And then they'll go to those that split up. Well, they did have to do Jono because Jono was the most controversial. And so, with Tori and Jack, Tori has been very reactive and she seemed very happy before they were called to the couch and then as soon as she sat down you could see she was in this defensive stance and this is why their relationship works the way it does because she always feels like she has to protect jack and it's like why um they were shown their montage and it was humiliating and embarrassing for her i think this is why she stormed out i think she was embarrassed because she kept fighting with everyone saying that they didn't know their relationship they didn't know their connection and only to find out that actually jack is the one who was going around telling Telling people he wasn't attracted to her and she liked him more than you know he did and so for her i think this is why when she was asked do you have anything else to say she said i have nothing and i want to leave i was like why why do you have to be so horrible about everybody else that's participating in the experiment part of me wants to think that she's been groomed by jack to behave the way she's behaving the other part of me thinks that this is who she is in a relationship she's very sort of codependent in the sense that the guy is the one who leads and he has to sort of encourage her into what to say what to do or whatever because it doesn't make sense that she calls herself an alpha female she says that she's paid big bucks to challenge grown men and yet she cowers like a little kid every time jack is mentioned or jack's she's cornered to sort of question Jack and it's like what is it about him what is it about him because even when she was embarrassed and you could see it on her face Jack didn't seem bothered he didn't seem bothered he didn't seem phased I think he showed slight embarrassment in some of the comments but everything else he was just there with a smirk on his face and so I don't get why Tori doesn't see this I personally feel this is my opinion I think Tori was being told whatever she was being told by Jack and she believed it. And I think Tori and Jack had sort of agreed that they would stay in this experiment till the very end. And then when they saw that people didn't believe them as a couple because they thought they were top of the food chain, they then had this agreement that they were going to go all out and they were going to continue to fight for their marriage and sort of portray themselves as the most ideal couple in the experiment. And so to have people question this and to have sort of visual confirmation of Jack saying some of the most vile stuff about her i think this is the reason why tori was upset i don't think it has anything to do with john asking her you know where do you stand or what do you think about your time in the experiment i think it's the humiliation that it's been confirmed that actually jack didn't like her as much as she liked him he was just humoring her and telling her what she wanted to hear and for him to say oh let me take off your mic blah 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 everybody could tell he was coaching her and to have people like john disapprove of you says a lot given how crappy he's treated his partner. And so for me, it's sad that you could see that for Lauren, she should have turned around and said, I told you so. But she actually felt sad for her friend because she could see that her friend was going through something. And it's sad that Tori saw everybody else as the enemy and Jack as her shining, her knight in shining armor. And it's like, um, he's not that, love. He's not that. You are better off, you know, leaving this experiment single and hoping that you meet somebody else. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to find somebody else who's going to treat you exactly the same way. Just because they, they saw you accept that behavior from Jack. That's just my opinion. It's interesting that they didn't show all the couples. I thought they were going to show the rest of the couples. But um, next, uh, they move on swiftly. They don't, nobody even chases after Tori. Unless they cut that whole chunk out. Because they then move on to Lucinda and Timothy. Lucinda and Timothy, I know. At the start, I really wasn't feeling Lucinda. I felt she was inappropriate. And then seeing her journey and seeing her navigate her marriage with Timothy has been a revelation for me.
has been a revelation for me in the sense that I've learned to appreciate her. I've learned to love her. She's one, if not my favorite sort of participant from this season. I think they are my favorite couple, uh, Timothy and Lucinda, even if they didn't work out. Because I remember during the season saying, if Timothy can only recognize how much of an asset Lucinda is, he will be richer for it. I know people say Timothy is dating and Andy, I don't know about that. But seeing how Lucinda was able to pick him up and dust him up and put him on the shelf like the shiny diamond that he is, is amazing. We got to see the ups and downs of their relationship and to see them now and to hear him say Lucinda bought him the t-shirt that he's wearing says a lot says a lot for me it says a lot i like the fact that they talk at least three times a week which i remember saying also that if timothy can recognize how important lucinda is to his life he will have not only inherited a wife but also a family and i have a feeling that if lucinda really likes him like this her family is also going to love him i know on twitter she wrote that she's moving back i think she said she's going to I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't remember where she said she's going back to. So she's moving from Barron Bay. I think she's going back, she said, to Virginia. I don't know whether there's a... No, I think she said Victoria. Um, And so I love, I love her, uh, how she has sort of carried herself, listening in the experiment, how she has not taken credit for any of Timothy's growth and development. Because even when Tristan said, Mama, you did all the work, she said, no, everybody did the work, the, the experts, the participants, and everybody else. And so to see how changed a man Timothy is and how in tune he is with himself and how he was sort of, um, anytime he was asked anything or they needed a reaction from them as a couple, he would always turn to Lucinda and have Lucinda speak. And so to see how he's grown to value her, to cherish her, he treats her way better than some of the people that are still married. He treats her way better than some of the other guys that are still married in the exper that were in the experiment with them. So I love their growth. I love their development. I know they said, watch this space. I, I don't think Andy is it for, for Timothy. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe it's something that I missed, but I don't see anything there that would make me believe that she would be better for him than Lucinda. I think Lucinda is it. I think she's the gold standard. I remember saying that Lucinda is the woman that Timothy needed, not the woman he wanted. And she's shown why she was the woman he needed. And I wish all people who went on to such experiments would focus on the person they've been matched with and see why that person has been matched with them because then they would greatly benefit from this relationship because oh my god i love timothy and lucinda i really love this for them i love their growth i love their development i love their fact that they are there for one another they are very supportive they are very caring they're in tune whereby they sort of pay attention to the other person to make sure that they're okay even when they were watching their clips they kept checking in to make sure that the two of them were okay and lucinda kept encouraging timothy that it's okay it's okay it's a positive thing it's a positive thing and you could see he values her opinion because he even said even in you know, now that he's left the experiment, he's always turning to her when anything emotional happens in his life because he values her opinion of it. And it was like, oh my God, I love this for them. I really love it for them. And I love their growth and the, their development. I'm sad we didn't get to see all the other couples. I would have loved to see Ben and Ellie sort of dissect their relationship now that they've broken up and with the latest development, I would have loved to see what happened there. But anyway, maybe the experts decided to sort of focus on people whose stories actually made a difference or on people whose stories were actually highlighted throughout the process i don't know why they showed us eden and Jaden because we barely learned anything from them but anyway i digress thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and click on the link in my video to watch my review from episode 37 and see you in the next season bye guys